Thank you, Mark. Uh, and uh, good day, everyone. I, I came here today to honor the victims of the September 1 massacre last year and their families and their friends. For many years as a policy official in the Pentagon and a little bit in the White House and in the State Department more recently, um, I worked on the Middle East quite a bit. I heard about the MEK, as did most professional policy people. We didn't really know what we were talking about. And then, a few years ago, I examined the group a little more closely. So I looked at what the experts in Washington said about this group. I concluded that U.S. government accounts over the years, and I didn't see the classified accounts, but those were, those were challenged. By, by the attorneys to be brought to court, and the government was not able to produce classified evidence to the contrary. But the, but the public accounts appeared to have been changed over time, tampered with, exaggerated, altered, um, and simply not, not squared with the facts. They did not reflect the fact that these are people who came to oppose the dictatorships of, not, of originally the Shah of Iran, who became uh, brutally opposed to any political dialogue or any challenge from within, uh, or the religious fundamentalist regime that took over in 1979. What's been written about the MEK, that these alleged human rights abuses, there's, there's been a lot of allegations. They've all, there's no evidence, there's no credible evidence of any of it. And this has infected some, some important institutions. We heard that they, terrorized the country after the Shah fell. That's not true. Le Monde said that uh, Masoud Rajavi, had he been allowed to run instead of a, having a secret fatwa calling for his death, uh, would have gained millions of votes, including the support of all of the ethnic minorities, women, uh, and religious, uh, religious minorities as well. We heard that they became a branch of Saddam Hussein's military once ensconced at Camp Ashraf in Iraq. This is false. You can read the newspaper clippings at the time when they were allegedly brutalizing the Kurds in the north and the Shia in the south uh, in the spring of, of 1991. They weren't there at all. In fact, there were Iranian uh, regime figures who were, who were coming in under Mufti dressed as Kurds and creating atrocities. This, these are people who have stood for a non-nuclear Iran, religious tolerance, anti-fundamentalism, gender equality, and they've meant it, they've lived it for 20 plus years. And democracy, going back not just to the days of opposing the Shah, but to the era of Mossadegh and his attempt to nationalize the oil and, and stand up against colonialism, and even back to the constitutional uprising of 1906. These are the roots of the Iranian resistance movement. And, and I'm not sure that Washington understands that. <laughs> We are forsaking our own principles, our own laws, our international legal commitments, our written pledges, and the unarmed men and women who oppose dictatorship are paying with their lives. This may not be a media story, but Camp Liberty, it's a national disgrace. It's also an Iraqi disgrace, and Prime Minister Maliki, I think, has lowered the reputation of his country by becoming uh, essentially a dictator and a partisan, a sectarian partisan. It falls to the new Iraqi Prime Minister right now uh, to move the country toward unity. A lot is riding on what Ali Badi does. Through all of this, and my final word is that the resistance members have remained very composed, very focused, sad, uh, never forgetting their fallen comrades, but they've unswerving in their belief that they'll see an end to tyranny in Iran. And these attributes, steadfast adherence to principle, unwillingness to trade their honor for convenience or safety, are at the heart of what they stand for. So I honor their sacrifice, and I only hope that we Americans can find the fortitude to face the true facts in the region, summon the strategic wisdom to stand on behalf of human rights and popular sovereignty in not just Iraq, but Syria and ultimately Iran. Our country can reclaim our own honor. Thank you.